Hello and welcome to this new segment of CD spectroscopy and MOSBUS spectroscopy for chemist. My name is Arnab Datta and I am an associate professor in the department of chemistry at IIT Bombay. So, in this particular segment we are going to look into applications of MOSBUS spectroscopy. So, so far we have covered the basic of MOSBUS spectroscopy that it is actually an exchange of energy between nuclear state where the ground state of an atom preferably a 57 iron isotope atom which goes from I equal to half to I equal to 3 half excited state. And this change is a high energy tick change where it actually requires 14.4 kilo electron volt of energy. And this particular energy is exchanged during this MOSBUS spectroscopy and over there we get a signal and this signal is defined with two different parameters isomeric shift and quadrupolar splitting. And now let us take a look how we can use this MOSBUS spectroscopy and the associated parameters to find out what is the fate of a chemical reaction. So, this is the number 5 example of the application site. So, over here we are going to look into gamma radiolysis of an aqueous solution of iron 2 sulphate 7 H 2 salt. And what is gamma radiolysis? It is nothing but you are shooting that with gamma ray so that it can start a reaction by exchanging electrons. So, let us see how it actually happens. So, iron sulphate 7 H 2 O when we put that in water it actually get dissolved very nicely and it forms this iron 2 H 2 O whole 6 ion. So, over here this salt is lose, losing its sulphate ion and binding with 6 different water molecules in an octahedral coordination geometry that is shown over here. All of them is binding with water molecule and iron plus charge is plus 2, so overall charge is also plus 2. So, I should write in a Roman form that it is actually happening. Now, before going let us first look into it how the MOSBUS spectra of this particular system will look like. We have covered that one of the earlier segment, but just to recapitulate it over here. So, iron plus 2 system in octahedral geometry how it should look like. So, in the terms of electric field gradient or EFG it depends on two factors. One is the lattice that means the coordination geometry, one is the valence or distribution of the electrons. So, in this particular molecule you can see that this molecule is bind in a very symmetric octahedral geometry. So, you would not expect any lattice electric field gradient because there is no asymmetry over there. However, the valence electric field gradient I do expect to see. Why? Because this is an octahedral geometric system. So, my d orbitals will split up in E g and T 2 g symmetry and as you have discussed also earlier the ligands can be explained with respect to sigma donor, pi donor, sigma donor only or sigma donor pi acceptor and depending on that this energy gap between them is going to split which is known as the delta octahedral or crystal field splitting energy or ligand field splitting energy. So, this depends on the particular quality of the ligand and which particular atom is coordinating to the metal. Over here oxygen is binding is group 16. So, it is a sigma donor pi donor which actually ensures that over there this E g and T 2 g gap is actually quite low. That means, it prefers a high spin system. 
Now iron 2 is a D6 system. So this will go to 1, 2, 3, the fourth electron will go over here, fifth electron here, sixth electron comes over here. So now you can see Eg is symmetric, T2G is asymmetric because of one extra electron on the lower spin. So that is why valence electron exists, lattice not in the beginning. So what do we expect that there will be a quadrupolar splitting because of the presence of the valence interaction. So what we expected is the following, so I am drawing the Mosbach spectroscopy, this is the percentage of transmitted scale. So from 100 to 0, how I am going to see and this is the x axis is the velocity, the Doppler velocity which is actually representing the energy over here. So you expect that first there will be one line and that will split up in two lines because of this valence interaction, the valence asymmetry and the electric field gradient associated to that. This is the expect, but in reality what we see is the following. What do we see is that following is this. So over here if I take the average of this two line that is going to give me the delta value and this difference is the delta EQ, this is in the reality. Whereas the average of the expected one is almost at the same position. So the delta value or isomer shift almost at the same position but this splitting, quadrupolar splitting is much more larger in the case of the reality compared to the expected. So why so? Because there is one other phenomena happening over here and that is known as the yan taylor distortion. Because of the asymmetry present in the T2G level that is going to undergo further splitting. Oops. And this particular energy gap is not going to help but this one. You are gaining some energy from this configuration so that is going to happen. So you will see Jan Toller distortion, Jan Toller distortion and what is happening? The way I have drawn this is the x square minus y square, this is the z square orbital, this is the x y orbital, these are the y z and x z orbitals. So you can see the xy based orbitals are going higher in energy. That means in the z axis it is actually going out, the ligands are actually moving out. So z based orbitals are going to be stabilized and this actual structure will be elongated on the z axis and little bit shrinked on the equatorial plane or xy plane. And due to this interaction now your lattice is also having an asymmetry because from a perfect octahedral now it is moved to a D4H symmetry. So it will also trigger lattice contribution for electric field gradient and valence interaction is already there and there is a both of them will come into the picture and because it has two components now it to incorporating asymmetry around the metal. So I am going to see a higher value of quadrupolar splitting. So that is why quadrupolar splitting or delta EQ and that is shown over here. So that is <coughs> what I am going to see if I dissolve iron sulphate solution in water I am going to see this particular spectrum. Now move to the next one. So I have the solution present over here. So this is um, the transmittance and this is the free millimeter per second. So over here just to highlight you over here I am actually putting one spectra on top of others. So it is just overlaid. So this is 
100 percent transmittance to 0 percent, this is also start from 100 percent here and 0 percent here and so on and so forth. You can put multiple of them aligning so that I can see in the same graph what is the change is actually happening. So that is I am going to do it over here. So this is the iron H2O whole 6 2 plus solution with gentler distorted geometry and I am seeing this particular system. Now what I am going to show, I will try to put the original data black and the new appearing system in the beginning. So in this particular system, we actually hit gamma ray. This gamma ray is a little bit different energy than the gamma ray we are using for MOSBUS spectroscopy, but this gamma ray is still high energy enough so that it can trigger some reaction in this chemistry. And what do you expect the gamma ray actually does? The gamma ray the first thing it does, it actually reacts with water and produces OH dot and H dot radicals. So it actually breaks down one oxygen hydrogen bond homolytically, so each of them get one electron, oxygen get one, hydrogen get one and they create the respective free radicals. This free radical is going to react with this iron H2 whole 6 because this water molecule is getting hydrolyzed like that. It can be one of the water molecule which is already being bound with iron and one of them is creating this system. The overall charge is still remain plus 2. And then what happens this OH dot radical is very reactive and that is going to interact with this iron sample which is present in plus 2 oxygen state and tie 2 captures one electron from this iron 2 so that iron becomes iron 3 and then this OH dot taking one electron it becomes OH minus. So that is what is actually happening over here. The overall charge is still 2 plus because it is OH minus negative charge 3 plus charge so overall charge is still 2 plus. So that is what is supposed to happen. If is it really happening? Let us take a look into MOSBUS spectroscopy to find it. So when we begin in 0 minute this is the spectra we are seeing. No other thing only iron H2 whole 6 widely splitted quadrupolar splitting due to the gentler distortion which actually creates an asymmetry not only from the lattice state but also from the valence state. But what happens when we hydrolyze it? So over here we continue to see these bands as it is so that means it is actually staying there. But additionally we started seeing another set of peaks appearing which has a little bit lower delta EQ value and not only that the delta value for this new one is actually a little bit on the negative side compared to the delta value with the original iron 2 plus system. So we continue to do this experiment further and slowly we see that the original graph, the original values is actually shrinking down further and the red one is actually increase in size and at one point of time there is nothing left but only this. Now the question is why? So over here when you are talking about these two system, this is nothing but it is representing the iron H2O whole 6 gentle or distorted system. But 
but when this reaction is happening I am actually generating an another material which minus. So, that is I am generating and I am also creating an iron 3 plus system. Now, if I have an iron 3 plus system what will be the contribution of the electrons or distribution of the electrons over here. Now, H 2 and O H minus are all sigma donating pi donating orbitals or ligands sigma donating pi donating ligands. So, over here is going to be high spin system iron 3 plus is a d 5 system. So, all the 5 electrons will be stored like this. So, now you can see all of them are symmetrically oriented. So, there will be no valence contribution to the electric field gradient. So, it will be 0 value for the valence, but for the lattice one you can see lattice 1 it is asymmetric because 5 of them are water, 1 of them is hydroxide. So, lattice EFG will be there non-zero, but overall compared to this one where you have both valence and lattice EFGs present, when you are oxidizing it you are losing the valence one. So, your overall asymmetry is getting shrink down and that is why the delta EQ value also shrink down because now you are losing the valence EFG. Why the delta value is moving? That is straightforward because I am moving from iron 2 plus to iron 3 plus and as you have discussed earlier iron 3 plus means less amount of d electron. Less amount of d electron means that this is going to d6 I should say d6 versus d5. So, let me just draw it over here d6 versus d5. So, that means more shielding effect on iron 2, more shielding effect means actually less electron density of the S electron coming to the system and that is actually affecting the overall isomer shift because we know S electron density psi 0 square value is going to multiply with delta R which is negative in nature. So, this psi 0 square will be higher in the case of D5 or iron 3 plus system because it has more chance to see the nuclear and this delta R value is negative. So, it is going to shift more on the negative side. So, that is why we are seeing this particular change over here that slowly it is shrinking down the delta EQ value and also shifting towards the negative direction. And by that I can follow this reaction of the hydrolysis that it is actually happening over here. So, the MOSFET spectroscopy not only giving me an idea how this change is happening, but also what is actually happening over here. So, this is one of the nice examples of MOSFET spectroscopy to follow a chemical reaction. Now, we will take one more example of such change where we will talk about a ligand exchange reaction. So, again we will start with the same sample FeSO4-7H2O dissolve that in water and we will be creating this Fe hexahydrated sample plus 2 charge is developing over here. And then in this sample I am going to include 6 equivalent of cyanide ion in the form of potassium cyanide and try to find out what is actually happening. Is the cyanide is good enough to kick out some of the water molecules from the primary coordination of the iron or not. So, to look into this matter we did this experiment at a lower temperature to slow down the reaction so that you can follow that. So, the reaction was done at 5 degree centigrade and we continue to follow the MOSBA spectroscopy. So, I am going to show you multiple MOSBA spectroscopy. The x axis is the Doppler velocity millimeter in second, 
this is the percentage of transmittance. So, I will show different blocks of different spectra. So, each block will cover 100 to 0 percent of transmittance and not only that in this particular direction I am also moving with time. So, in the beginning I see a very well separated doublet like that. So, why it is so? Because this is the iron H2O whole 6 which is showing you gentler distortion. So, due to that we are having lattice and valence electric field gradient both of them are present and that is why I see a huge delta EQ difference. This is happening at 0 minute that means before we even add any cyanide to that only the iron sulphate is solubilized in water and it goes to its expected hexahydrated format showing some gentler distortion. The next thing what we started seeing after almost 3 hours that the original peaks are present over there. But additionally we started getting an another signal very close to it like that. So, now you have a two doublet, one doublet in the original position and there is another doublet coming over here. This is was happening at 160 minute almost 2 hour 40 minutes later. Then we run that for almost 12 hours keeping it at 5 degree centigrade and the data we are getting is the following. The original position is very limited. So, obviously the original iron hexided sample is going out. This data we are seeing earlier. So, let me draw that in a different color so that we can follow that also. So, that particular data actually start increasing in size. So, that was actually happening. And very interestingly, we also found there is an another signal generating on that side. So, let me put that in the green line. So, another signal starts showing up over here, but that is a singlet. So, what we are getting one original position a singlet, there is a doublet and the original well splitted doublet. So, original doublet that I know that is from this original structure. Now, where this singlet and doublet is coming up? So, this is what we observe at 720 minute. So, let us run the reaction a few more hours. So, then we go to 1500 minute more than 12 hours and what we got more than almost I would say 20 hours now. So, what we are getting this first peak is almost gone. And not only this, the so first peak is almost gone, that means the primary iron hexide sample is all exhausted. Not only that, this red color doublet is also almost gone a little bit higher compared to the original one. And this green color sample is actually becoming the major signature. This is actually what is happening after more than 20 hours. Then if further look into it, 
at 6000 minute almost 100 hours later what is happening and over there we found the only signal is present over there is this green signet only the green singlet is remaining the rest of them are gone. So, that is the MOSBA spectra of this particular system. Now, our goal is to figure it out what is actually happening over here. So, to understand that we have to understand what is actually happening with this iron hexided sample when it is reacting with cyanide ligands. So, what we have found that when the reaction begin it reacts with 5 cyanide altogether and create this molecule so this is in iron 2 state so overall charge was plus 2 in the beginning now it is still in plus 2 state but now 5 of the water molecule is kicked out of the cyanide and over here is kicked out. I am going to get this particular molecule overall charge will be 3 minus because 5 negative charge from cyanide and plus 2 charge from iron plus 2 balancing is 3 minus. This is the molecule I am preparing how this molecule will look like. So, cyanides all around 5 of them and only one water molecule present over there iron is in plus 2 state. Now, compared to these two what are the difference I expect. This iron pentacyanide system cyanides as we expected it do 14 base molecule carbon is actually coordinating. So, that is why it is it will be a low spin system. So, the electronic configuration from this it will be low spin system. So, it will be paired up this energy gap is too high because of the presence of this strong sigma donor and pi acceptor system of cyanide that is a huge change when it is exchanging water versus cyanide. Water is a sigma donor pi donor it prefers high spin cyanide is a sigma donor pi acceptor it prefers a low spin system and in this case of low spin you have iron 2 d6 system like this all paired up. So, there will be no valence contribution to the EFG. Lattice contribution so it is no contribution so it will be 0. Lattice contribution will be still there because you can see there is a difference in the coordination geometry this is cyanide and water. So, there is a asymmetry present over there. So, it will continue to have the lattice electric field gradient, but not the valence electric field gradient. And that is why what we expect between these two, this system over here, it will shrink down on its quadrupolar splitting. So, that means are we saying that this is the lower quadrupolar splitting that we are seeing that is because of this particular sample? over there and which is giving me this doublet. There is a possibility of that and that is what is actually happening because of the cyanides is making the system a low spin system the quadrupolar splitting is shrinking down because there is no valence contribution from there. Now, the question is why it is now moving on the negative side previously when you start from the beginning that is the delta value of the starting material follow the color this one shifted further negative why it is negative side. That answer is also found in the cyanide. Cyanides are as we just said is a pi acceptor ligand. So, it has pi star orbital which is going to interact with the metal d orbital and it is going to transfer electron density out of the metal to the ligand. So, this back bonding will happen electron density will move out and as we have discussed in the earlier segment as you are moving the d electrons out you are cutting down your d electron density cutting down your shielding effect for the d electrons and s electron has more chance 
to see the nuclei and if that is happening your psi 0 square value is increasing and that is going to affect the delta value which is depend on this and the delta r value which is negative in nature. So, multiply that two together I am going to shift to a negative value if my d electrons are going out of my sample and that is exactly happening my d electrons are moving out and I am having a delta value further shifted. What happens to the last one? What is the green one then? The green one is actually what is happening? I am producing iron hexacyanide sample. And that is the system which is actually giving me this green color signal over here. It is singlet. Why it is singlet? Because you can see iron hexacyanide is going to have a very similar electronic configuration like this one D6 system all paired up because exchange of one water with another cyanide molecule is not changing its property a lot with respect to high spin or low spin it is still remaining low spin that is why no valence contribution. And also now you have all symmetric cyanides around it. So, the lattice contribution of EFG is also 0. So, there is no electric field gradient present in this iron 2 hexacyanide sample and that is why it is showing us one singlet and why it is further negative delta value because one extra cyanide is coming exchanging in water further more pi electron movement from the metal D to the pi star of the orbital and that is actually triggering further electron density out of the metal system which is bringing down the d electron density increasing the propensity of s electron density to be present in the nucleus which is multiplied with the negative term of delta r and I am moving toward the negative side. So, that is what is actually happening over their system. So, over here now you can see that whole system is showing me that there are three different components work there. One is the beginning one, then there is 5 water molecule replaced by 5 cyanide molecule one and the final one all hexacyanide sample. So, this is I can see it over time how it is behaving and I can see this 5 cyanide water molecule bound system this red one is intermediate one which slowly also transfer to the final product of the hexacyanide one. So, over here it is showing that MOSFET spectra can show you this system. So, over here I am just summarizing the information that we found over here. So, it is going to have a Jantoller distortion. So, that is what I am going to see a huge distribution of delta EQ. Anywhere you are showing a graph, you should show the axis. And then 5 cyanide molecules comes and replace it. So, over here there is no more electric field gradient from the valence, but the lattice one still there and previously G was there and valence EFG was there. So, that is why over here I am expecting that this system is going to show small shifted value of quadrupolar splitting. So, it will be much more smaller and not only that the delta value what you say it is going to shift towards a more negative direction because now the cyanide with their all pi back bonding is going to move the d electron out of it. And finally, it moves one more cyanide 
we pressing the final water molecule. Iron is on in plus 2 oxidation state in all of them, D6 system. So, over here lattice EFG is also now gone and valence EFG is gone previously and it remains the same. So, but there no contribution. So, at the end what I am getting is actually a singlet system over here. The transmittance. So, that is what is actually happening and over here now if I want to draw a graph for kinetic following of this molecule. So, percentage of relative abundance of each of the material. So, first one is this Fe H2O whole 6 2 plus that is going to be 100 percent in the beginning and slowly it will move out and it is going out after a while. So, this is Fe H2O whole 6 2 plus. Next one is this one which actually start forming after a while and then it will shrink down and go down over time. So, this is this Fe H2O CN5 overall charge 3 minus all iron in plus 2. And the final one is this green one which actually come into the picture much later and then it slowly try to be there and at one point of time it will cease on 100 percent is reached and this is the iron CN6 4 minus charge over there. So, by that you can see you can follow the kinetics of the reaction very nicely with Mosbach spectroscopy. And over there one question might come to your mind why I am seeing this molecule where 5 of them is actually already exchanged. Why cannot I see 1, 2, 3, 4 cyanide exchange system? Those are actually happening, but those reactions are happening much, much faster rate even at 5 degree centigrade and it is happening before I can record a Mosbach spectroscopy. So, that is why that is remaining such a system that I am only seeing this particular sample one of the stable intermediate and that is the first thing I am able to see. The previous one I cannot see it. If I go to very low temperature we might be able to capture those other intermediates also. So, with that I would like to conclude over here. So, this is another nice example how you can follow Mosbach spectroscopy to find out the kinetics of a molecule and figure it out how these molecules are behaving and undergoing different intermediates from a particular precursor to a final product. So, with that we would like to conclude over here and we look forward for the other application examples of Mosbach spectroscopy in the coming classes. Thank you, thank you very much.